It's a Mad Meccano twin build. Hi. If you want even more Meccano goodness, why don't you check out my Patreon channel? And please like and subscribe and leave a comment below. I post updates in the community section, not only for this week's Patreon build, but also for what I'm currently working on. Thank you, and back to the build. Hi and welcome back. This week's twin build is the monoplane and the BEV 1500 weight delivery truck. This monoplane was truly a pain to build. I was going to make a statement about my fingers and small spaces, but thought better of it. This is a low wing monoplane, which means that the wings are attached underneath the cabin or cockpit. Meccano's monoplane aircraft go back a long way. My oldest manual, 1918, has at least two monoplane aircraft in them, both reminding me of the Fokker Eindecker from the early stages of the air war in the First World War including the king post to which the wings were attached above the cockpit. Anthony Fokker was inspired by the Monet Suna H, which the French army was flying at the opening stages of the war. Her Fokker copied the aircraft and then improved on the design with the Eindecker. And of course, at this point, I'm going to get some, cop some comments that the Eindecker was a, was a mid-wing aircraft. So what do we mean by low, mid and high wing aircraft? There is no one design that trumps all, with every design having strengths and weaknesses. The name refers to the point at which the wings attach to the body of the aircraft, with low wing being that the uh, fuselage sits on top of the wings and high being the opposite, but the section that the wings attach to or the wing box has to go somewhere. High wing planes tend to have flatter wings. They have the benefit of shortened landing distances due to the lessened impact of ground effect. While low wing have a shortened takeoff distance due to the increased benefit of ground effect. High wing has increased space for cargo. The low wing has a benefit on performance and slightly better aerodynamics. The lower wing box on the low wing aircraft has better ability to absorb impact on landing or landing forces. While the high wing offers better clearance for rough ground, allowing landing and taking off on more primitive strips. There are safety benefits to having the wings underneath the aircraft in the case of crash landing. Also giving a plus to refueling for quick turnarounds. While having engines higher up creates problems for maintenance. High wing aircraft are inherently more stable due to the centre of mass being situated below the centre of lift, but are more sensitive to crosswind and turbulence when they are near or on the ground. And what does this all have to do with a Meccano build? At face value, nothing. Not until we start to look at what Frank Hornby was trying to achieve with Meccano. His goal was to have young minds ask, why? If you ever get the chance to read any of the magazines, you will see the level of, of education that children had. The use of words was complicated and, by their use, children learnt an expanded a knowledge base. The above list of benefits of low wing versus high wing was knowledge that I had no idea of. I spent most of my life around this knowledge in some form or other. I've read books, built aircraft model kits, researched the aircraft that I built. But what is above the engineering the benefits and flaws of different styles and designs I had no knowledge of. It was not until I sat down to research this script 
and create a story to discuss. And this is what the beauty of random knowledge is. I know so much about so many things. Each is in and of its own completely worthless. But knowledge for the sake of knowledge is never truly worthless. With undoubtedly history being one of my favourites. Not just histories of hundreds or thousands of years ago. Or even learning about cranes which seems to be my new passion. But history of a hundred or so years ago. Talking to my mother about her life and what she has witnessed has been fascinating. Her father even more so. He lived through a time that saw man take to the skies through to landing on the moon. What's tragic is how much has gone. My father's story has disappeared. Only the bits that we remember as a family. His father stormed the beaches at Gallipoli. And I will never know his story. From Tasmania to the Med. To France and then out to Russia as part of the BEF. Post the First World War. A man who loved to fight. And took great joy in teaching my brother how to play dominoes. And win. And so this build finishes. And yes, I made aeroplane noises when test flying it, along with the compulsory daka 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 sounds. The BEV 1500 weight delivery truck, or the vehicle and company that I spent two days searching for. When you search for BEV, you will find that it refers to battery powered electrical vehicle. A search for 1500 weight will turn out any amount of Second World War vehicles. This is where building Meccano can get very frustrating in more than one way, and very enlightening in others. The builds I'm currently working on come from around the 1960s, so naturally I'm assuming that the models they're based on also come from around that period. Either in the fact that they were built at that time or that they were still in use at that time. BEV Limited, or the British Electrical Vehicle Company Limited, is a much older company. They were based in Southport, Lancashire, in the early part of the 20th century, as one of around about 30 companies supplying electrical vehicles at the time to the UK. BEV Limited main market was industrial. Even fe featuring on the silver screen in the documentary The Balance, directed by Paul Rother in 1947. A documentary about how trading goods from the rest of the world helps the UK economy to recover after the Second World War. In 1926, the company was purchased by Wingrove and Rogers Limited of Kirby, Liverpool and then continued to pass hands over the last century. But Britain was, like many other countries, so far ahead of the game when it comes to electrical vehicles at the beginning of the 20th century, exploring and using this technology on a daily basis was a bit of an eye-opener. Discussing this with my mother, she told me how her grandmother, living in London at the turn of the 20th century, had owned and daily driven an, an electrical car. By 1900, London had a fleet of taxis in use around the capital, designed by Walter Bursey. Early cars were marketed as being suitable for women, as they were easier to operate. Not having to be manually hand-cranked being one factor. They did not have the issue of vibration, the smell and noise that was associated with petrol powered cars, nor the issue of firing up the boiler of the steam powered car, the vehicle that my great grandmother had owned and driven before her electrical car. So what happened? Why did we not see a profusion of electric vehicles on the roads of Great Britain? In many ways we did. The delivery truck that this model is based on was in use in many places, from docks to factories, 
and anywhere where the risk of explosion ruled out the use of petrol engines. Then the biggest obstacle to overcome was that of power storage. The batteries are the technology uh, that has required the advancement and engineering in. My first job was at a security guard back in late 1990. One of the sites I worked on was a co-op dairy based in Newcastle upon Tyne. The smell overnight of the batteries charging is something that I will not forget. Each battery had a thermometer attached and strict instructions on what to do if the temperature rose too high. The risk of H2S gas or hydrogen sulphide was drummed into me. And the couple of times that I had to phone the engineer on call overnight with a problem was never met with a why have you phoned me comment. But I believe over a hundred years after the first electric car invented by Thomas Parker in 1884 in Wolverhampton, we are at last seeing, seeing the technology to what might be a, a better future, or at least if nothing else, a different set of problems. One thing that is important about this build, and worthy of note, is that it teaches how to attach the cable to a drum for cranes. A lesson that is important in so many of the crane builds. As cable is paid out at one end, it is drawn in at the other. In this case, it allows for the steering mechanism to turn the front wheel. I wonder if that was the reason to produce this model, because by 1960, this, techn this technology was old. But it lended itself nicely for the task of teaching. Out of interest, I've talked about low-wing and high-wing aircraft, but what about mid-wing aircraft? The mid-wing has many benefits, from excellent roll abilities and also stability when rolling. It can get lift in vertically reversed direction, which is why stunt planes are so good at what they do. Less drag, so more performance. With, with, with a downside of so much storage space being taken up by the wing box. With the design having the wings mounted normally to the rear of the aircraft, the centre of mass is also more to the rear. And finally, they need longer landing gear if they are mounted in the wings. But how can one not look at the BAC Lightning and not go, oh yes, the de Havilland Vampire and not smile at its beauty, or the Income T65 and feel the butterflies in the stomach at the howl of its engines. Kick the tyres and feel the force.